Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. In this video, we are going to unbox some comics. This is actually part two of two CGC unboxings that we are doing. I did one yesterday night, and this is the second one. So if you missed the first one, I definitely want to encourage you to go back and watch it because there were some good books that were unboxed yesterday. And hopefully there are going to be some additional uh, books that are unboxed today. I have one more CGC box that is actually en route to me. My guess is that it's going to arrive towards the end of this week, possibly uh, the beginning of next week. But when that one happens, when it arrives, we will also do an unboxing of that. And then I also have an order that I'm going to be sending off to CGC uh, pretty soon here, possibly two invoices. Uh, and I'm actually going to release a video showing you guys some of the books that will actually be in that submission to CGC. I, I don't think I've ever done that before where I actually show you the books that I'm sending. So I thought it would be kind of cool to do something a little bit different. And of course, when those books come back in a couple of months, you guys will see those as well. So I uh, want to give um, a little bit of an apology to anyone that came into the live stream earlier today. Today. I actually inadvertently last night scheduled a live stream for today, and I I, I was very optimistic. <laughs> I was overly optimistic uh, that I would be able to go live at eleven o'clock uh, a.m. Pacific time. And unfortunately, the day was getting away from me, and I was unable to go live, so I had to punt. And I'm punting until right now. So we are going to do it now. We're going to unbox some books and then hopefully we'll have a good time. Just remember that we do still release pre-recorded videos Monday through Friday, always at 3.30. So you definitely don't want to miss that. There are some good videos that are still going to be coming out this week. One of them is a fantastic, I think, Q&A on pressing. A lot of people as of even today were asking me questions about pressing. So I am dropping this Q and a video at some point this week. It might be today. I honestly can't remember, uh, but there are some good videos that are going to be coming out this week that I hope you guys will actually enjoy 3 30 PM Pacific time. We always release videos Monday through Friday. So let me say hello to some comic book soldiers that are here in the room. Uh, and uh, there were a lot of people here uh, before that, uh, left out of the room. I think when I jumped in here, there was like 20 people already. And so again, apologies to anyone that was here before. Um, and, and, you know, may have missed me because I wasn't quite ready. So Hydro Collectibles was here earlier. He is back. It's good to see you. Party Time Comics is a party y'all. He is in the room. It's good to see you, my friend. Um, scrolling down through the names, scrolling down through the names. Who else do we have here? Uh, H factor. How you doing, my friend? It is good to see you. Chris Barrett is in the house. Welcome. Chris Barrett actually put up, uh, I, I did not see this. Was it a video, Chris, or was it on Instagram? I thought I saw it on Instagram, uh, but he did a random pull. Um, so let me know where that was so I can flag that for everyone. Uh, <laughs> How you doing, my friend? He's on his lunch break. Glad it worked out for you. I know I missed a couple of people's lunch breaks, but uh, hopefully it sounds like we may have hit yours. So there you go. Scrolling down through the thing, uh, scrolling down. <laughs> you guys are awesome. All right, Ben, how you doing? It's good to see you, my friend. All right. So uh, one, one reminder that I'll give you guys before we get too deep into this thing. Tina is back. Tina, it's good to see you. Many of the books that I showed in part one, uh, are actually probably going to be sold. There's going to be some that I'm going to hold on to my, for myself, for my collection. They're actually in a bin over here. And then there's a stack of ones that are in a bin over here that will probably be sold. So if there are some things that you see, reach out to me on Instagram or email. We can have a conversation about it. Really, everything is going to be at FMV, right? Go collects FMV. That is the price that I'll be using. So it won't be too hard to figure out how much we're going to charge. If you have access to go collect, you will know exactly what I'm going to charge. So let's go ahead and um, crack this thing open. So here we go. Chris is saying it was on the gram. So I did not see that, but I will. I, I saw it, but I didn't read it or watch the video. So I will go back and look at that, Chris. If you guys get a chance, make sure you check out Chris Barrett's page on the Instagram. You did not miss a thing, my friend. Uh, I was uh, early for the previous live or late for the previous live stream and not quite ready. So we're going to do it right now. Luis, it's good to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Let's get this ball rolling so as to not belabor the point. So again, I don't quite remember what's in this box. Uh, the last one appeared to be a bunch of uh, Del Otto uh, books. And that was a, a pretty nice box where there was basically everything in there was a 9-8 with the exception of one book that came back at a nine six and one draw book that was basically rejected. Um, and what was crazy, they actually sent my certificates back. 
the certificates uh, that kind of have the certificate of authenticity in there, they actually sent those back. I was very surprised by that. And I'm not sure I've heard that they didn't do that, but clearly that's not the case. So there is one book, I think in here, maybe two books, two books uh, that were also rejected. Uh, that previous box that I did, I screened at a nine six, if memory serves. So the way that the CGC screening works is that you can establish a threshold where you basically say any book that is above graded, any book that is below, send it back to me. And so I can't remember what uh, criteria I set for this box, but clearly these books did not meet that criteria. So they actually sent them back to me in some cardboard here. So we'll we'll crack them open and kind of see what the deal is. But clearly those books fell below the thresholds, either of a nine, six or a nine, eight. Again, can't quite remember. Uh, so welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Michael's here. Um, <laughs> Chris is like, is there a Patreon discount? Uh, no. Patreon members get my undying gratitude. Uh, they also get, a, I think, a fair bit of better access to me. I mean, most people have good access anyway, um, but we, we, I charge people the same thing, man. It doesn't matter whether you're a Patreon member or not. I try to charge people a fair price. And I know you're joking about that, but it's like, you know, uh, part of me is like with sales, it's like, Either I'm going to screw you this time, I'm going to screw you next time. That's kind of how a sale works. And with me, it's the same price, no matter what, no matter who you are, it is the same price and it's F and V super simple. You always know that it's fair and you always know where it's coming from. So, but Michael, welcome. Uh, Randy Resnake is in the house. Daniel is also here. It is good to see you guys. It is definitely good to see you guys. All right. So let's pull this thing out. Let's see what we got here. This box is turned around. So I'm going to rotate this one just a little bit so I can pull it out. Ooh, I think there's some good ones in here. I think there's a couple of really good ones in here. Yeah, this this first one's cool. I, I think I pressed a lot of these books that are in this one. So uh, this, this is cool. This one is by Ed McGinnis. This is an Ed McGinnis variant. This is Amazing Spider-Man 799. Uh, this is a Red Goblin appearance. I love this cover. I love this one. So this is one that had been in the collection for a while. I picked this one up uh, in June of 18 when it first dropped and it has been in the collection all this time, but I absolutely love this cover right here featuring the Red Goblin. And I sent this one in because I knew that the Red Goblin was coming back. So that's part of what motivated me to actually send that one in. But that's definitely a dope cover. I, I really love that one. So let's pull out the next one. Let's see what we have here. There's, I think there's going to be a lot of Spider-Man in this one. Uh, I think there's a, a healthy amount of Spider-Man. So this one is uh, on that last one was a seven, seven. I'm sorry, nine point eight as well. So this one is Amazing Spider-Man seven ninety nine. This is uh, another nine point eight. This is the regular cover. This is the regular cover. This one is really cool. I definitely dig this cover. Uh, I don't think I got the version of that, but that's a cool one. I was really into this Red Goblin stuff in 18. When when that dropped, I was definitely into that one. So I think there's a couple of these particular books in here. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man 798. This is the, the whole story arc of the Red Goblin. This is a really cool uh, cover here. This is a, a Dan Slott story. And I definitely dig this. This is actually, and that was one of the questions. I never quite knew what they were going to do in terms of the first appearance of the Red Goblin. So we now have our, at least I now have my answer. Uh, this is the first Norman Osborn as the Red Goblin. That's how they're doing this one. So they, <laughs> Hydra's like, bring on all of the amazing Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. So it's going to, I think it's going to be a healthy number. Uh, Randy's like, love the cover. Uh, Luis is like, love the cover. There you go there. I think there's a healthy number of 9.8s in this particular box. Um, there was one comment I did not show. Uh, I think it was this one, Dan slot. Nope. That wasn't that one. Uh, Dan slot is the goat. I think that's it. So, uh, definitely some cool stuff in here. Uh, I, oh yeah, brother. I have that. I went, I went hog wild clay on, uh, amazing Spider-Man 798 through seven through 800. Uh, I picked up, I want to say 10 of the variants for Amazing Spider-Man 800. And you know that those suckers were like 10 a pop. So I spent a healthy amount of money on that one. <laughs> healthy. It's the one with like Gwen Stacy just right on the cover. It is a, it is a really, really nice cover. But I, I went all in with this uh, Red Goblin stuff the first time around. All in. Uh, how do you look for books? Um, so let's uh so let's talk about that for just a hot moment. Um 
really what I do is, and I think I captured it in a video, I would have to remember which one, but basically what I do is I, if I have multiple copies of a book, I'm basically eyeballing the heck out of the books and I'm looking for any kind of defect, any defects, the books get set to decide. And thankfully what happened is with 798 through 800, I had a, a healthy number of those copies in some cases, six copies or more. And so I was able to really eyeball them. And so any book that had a defect automatically got set to the side. Any book that had a potentially a pressable defect or looked perfect to my eye was pressed. Once it was pressed, it came back out. I then examined it again to see whether there were actually any defects, anything that made that book less than perfect. And once I did that, those were the books that were sent inside. And then I still screened those books at CGC, I think at a 9.8, I think, um, to then basically not waste my money on a 9.6. Because part of what I did was I looked at the cost of getting the books graded. I looked at uh, the value of the books once graded, and I kind of decided that if it wasn't a 9.8, it might not be worth it. So that was kind of how I went through it. But definitely, if you want to talk more about that, Michael, we can definitely chop it up and maybe I'll even do a video on that one. Um, we'll just have to see. So here, let me show you guys the next one. This this next one is a variant. Uh, this one is uh, a really, really cool cover. I, I really dig this one. This is Amazing Spider-Man 798. Again, the first Norman Osborn as the Red Goblin, also a 9.8. But this one is a really cool cover. I dig this one. I dig that. So that's cool. I think there's a I think there's a healthy number of Spidey in here. Here is a another another one. This is um Amazing Spider-Man 798. This is the Dotson variant cover. The, again, this is the, the first Norman Osborn as the Red Goblin, but it's also the Venom 30th anniversary variant cover. Definitely a cool book. I want to say I have a healthy, again, healthy number of these um, in the collection already. I think I need to turn that just a little bit. We're seeing the wrong stuff there. So we've got that one. Let's see what this one is. This is another replay. This is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 798. We've already seen that one. That's another 9.8. So we'll set that one off to the side. Oh, one of my favorite covers. One of my favorite Red Goblin covers. Uh, this is 799. This is just called the Variant Edition. Uh, this one is just really cool. That is just really cool. Again, I think I screened again for these all at 9.8. All of these books were, were handpicked. All of them were uh, pressed by me prior to actually going in. And again, I still have a healthy number of raw copies of each one of these sitting around. Another 9.8 of Amazing Spider-Man 799. This is a less than, less than sexy box of, of stuff here. Not a whole lot of variation, at least so far. Uh, this one is another, another duplicate here. Another 798 Venom 30th anniversary right there. Yeah, Hydra. There are some really cool covers in here, man. There are some really cool covers in here. Um, are you talking about, Randy, are you talking about uh, 798, 799, or 800? There's a lot of covers for all of them, bro. Every one of them, there was a ton of them. So I'm um, pulling out this next one. Yep, we've seen this one already. I actually have one of these in the collection already in half for a while sent it in a while ago, had CGC actually press it for me. It actually came back a nine, eight. So now I have two additional copies so far based upon what I've actually pulled out of the box here. <laughs> Brother, if you watch this channel, man, I'll have you on some amazing Spider-Man stuff in a heartbeat. You'll be out there buying amazing Spider-Man 110 like everybody else. You know, here's another one. Have a ton of these, ton of these in the collection. So I did a little organizing yesterday. Uh, I realized that I had a healthy number of books that I'm going to pass back to the community in some shape or form. So I have like a whole bin of books that won't stay. This one is a cool cover. I think it's Garan. I don't know how you say his name, Garan. This is Amazing Spider-Man 798. Again, I think it's a Garan variant cover. This is a Young Guns. Young Guns, first Norman Osborn as the Red Goblin. I definitely dig this cover. This is a cool one. This one is cool. I dig, I dig Red Goblin as a villain. So I definitely got into those covers that, uh, that showed him. All right. Oh, we've got something a little different here. Something a little different. <laughs> something a little different over here. Oh, 800. Yeah. 800 was crazy. I think one of the most expensive ones was that, 
I think it was a Kirby remastered. I think they had a Kirby remaster, maybe in black and white. That Joker was like 500 bucks, but there were, there were a ton of them. There were a ton of, of 800 covers. I want to say I picked up nine of them. I picked up nine different covers over the time. <laughs> Ah, uh, one, one 11 is a trippy thing, man. There, there are, there's like herbs and potions involved in amazing Spider-Man 111. That, that's a, that's a trippy one, man. Um, yeah. So, um, H factors asking a question around these books. So, um, there's a couple of things that are at play here. These are books. These are books that I honestly picked up at the time, honestly, because, I really dug the storyline. I really dug what Dan Slott was doing. I really dug the Red Goblin stuff and the Norman Osborn and baby Norman. I was really into it because I started this back in June of 18. Um, I, I, at that point, I had maybe sold like five comics, to be honest with you. So I picked up all of these books because I was a fan and I wanted them. And now it's a thing of, well, let me send these in now that the value of these books has started to creep up just a little bit. It warrants actually preserving at least some of them for the personal collection. And because I have so many copies, I'm like, well, why not? Um, why not sell some of these to actually take that money and put back into the collection in another way, that being some of the Silver Age Spider-Man books that I'm currently in the process of trying to track down. So that's kind of sort of the plan. Um, at the time of submission, it was also, I was thinking about Amazing Fantasy 15. But I've since put that one on the back burner um, and really focused on trying to complete the run of Amazing Spider-Man. So that's like hopefully that explains a little bit of like the motivation of what's going on here. So and, you know, the value of the books are starting to go up, which which kind of warrants. OK, now it's worth it to actually send in and spend a little money on some of these. TJ Slab Dragon is in the house. How you doing, brother? <laughs> We have someone else searching for Amazing Spider-Man 110. The thing is, they're actually not terribly expensive. I mean, they went up 350%, but 350% was like $60. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the books are still relatively uh, inexpensive. And I think we may end up going with, I think it was Mr. Comic 89. I think he put up hashtag uh, Family Gibbon. I think that was the hashtag. We, we need to come up with a hashtag for this that someone doesn't already have. So this next one is, is really cool. If you guys remember, I got into Pit and, and uh, Image stuff not too long ago where I went back and reread a lot of that stuff from the 90s. So here you go. I love this cover. Love it. This is Pit number one from the 90s. That is wicked. Dale Keown, I absolutely love this guy's artwork. And so I have now five copies of Pitt in the collection. I had to send one of them in and now it came back at a 9.8. Uh, I remember pressing this book. <laughs> that book is dope. That book is dope. I absolutely love that one. And then I think this is the last book. This is the last book and I, clearly, I actually, with this last book, I just realized that this one was not screened at 9.8. This one was actually screened at 9.6, which tells me about those raw books. Those raw books are probably 9.4 or lower. And I know that because this book came back at a 9.6. So that's how I know right there. This is um, X-Men number two. Uh, this is really just like a childhood book. You know what I'm saying? Um, and unfortunately it came back at a 9.6, but it is what it is. And um, I'm surprised I sent that in because there are some clear defects there. I wonder if I grabbed the wrong book. Couldn't be possible because I can see two ticks right on the cover that are pressable. So anyway, that is uh, X-Men number two, a uh, little bit of a faux pas on my part. <laughs> so those are essentially the books. So let's see. Um, um, yeah, so do I. Chris, Chris Barrett is talking about these remastered and hidden gem variants. I definitely dig those, man. The first one that I saw was, um, that I remember seeing was the Fantastic Four number one that came out with a Kirby remastered and it was a side horizontal shot. And I was, I was obsessed with trying to figure out where that shot came from and shout out to, uh, tech, um, what is, what is Ben's screen name? I can't remember Ben's screen name, but, but Ben, who has been on the channel, he, that dude is such a fountain of just information. I was like, Ben, where did this come from? And he remembered, I think it was like a strange tales. It's literally in the boxes down here at my ankles. And, uh, it, it was the remastered, they remastered the cover from an ad that Kirby had done back in the day. 
they took the ad and they basically turned it into the cover of the comic, which I got a kick out of. So in the bin next to me, I actually have the uh, Fantastic Four number one, the one that just started not too long ago. And I think it's the Strange Tales, whatever that issue is with that cover ad in there. And so I definitely dig those remastered hidden gem things. I, I love those things. I mean, they tend to be pretty pricey, um, but but they're really cool. Um, so here scrolling down through some of the comments. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I don't know that I've seen that one. Chris Barrett is talking about the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man number one hidden gym cover. I don't know if I've seen that one. And the only thing I've heard about, I've heard two things about the friendly neighborhood uh, Spider-Man. I've heard that it is really good. That's one thing. And then I also heard that they're going to kill Spider-Man off in an upcoming issue because somebody reached out to me to ask me my opinion of that. Um, scrolling down through the comments here. <laughs> TJ is a beast when it comes to those. He is a beast. Uh, hit me up, brother, because I may actually have some extras here. I can't remember what numbers we pulled out of there. But if you want to talk about it, Clay, just hit me up, brother. We can have a conversation. If I can can make some magic happen for you, I definitely, definitely would. Uh, scrolling down. Um... <laughs> oh, my goodness. He is hilarious. The Gibbon Gang. Here's Ellie, Eddie Mullet. How you doing, brother? He He's on the board with hashtag Gibbon Gang. And I'll show you guys uh, the books one more time for those folks that are coming in a little late here. Kingpin Comics, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Uh, which one? Which one? Is it the uh, the black cover with the uh, with Venom where he looks like he's basically like an alien? Is that the one you're talking about? If so, that's a dope cover. If that if that's the one you're talking about, that is a dope cover, my friend. Adi Granoff is a super, super talented individual. No, we can't do Simmons. I can't throw my name in there. Simmons, Gibbons. <laughs> too many S's, too many S's in that one. <laughs> oh man, scrolling down through the comments here. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, scrolling down, Old Wolf, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Welcome. Old Wolf hooked me up. He dropped some knowledge on me the other day when I was thinking about running a hard line to the comic book room back here. He dropped some some knowledge on me. He was like, Reggie, don't get the cat five, go with the cat six. Shout out to you, brother, because that's exactly what I ran to the room. Here is the Cat 6. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the right dongle. They I sent one. I ordered one, and they sent it, and uh, it turned out to be the wrong one. This one actually doesn't fit my uh, my laptop, and so I'm actually waiting for the new one to come in. So fingers crossed we will be able to upgrade. I also have a, had a, an exchange with the company that makes this interface that I'm using right now because, unfortunately, they only go up, I think it's like 720, 720p, and they call that high def. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I film um, the live streams in 1080p, and I'm like, when is this coming? And they're like, soon. So, And then my pre-recorded videos are in 4K. So I'm trying to you know, improve things. And when you make one change, it affects other things. So I'm trying to find a balance So fingers crossed that we can continue to get there. Thank you very much, Chris Bear. Tech 31 kid. Thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate that. One thing that I have noticed uh, as of late is that you guys know a lot about each other because you guys read all the comments here. I only read some of them as I'm scanning through. You guys know a lot about each other. And I think that that is fantastic. I really, really do. So thank you, Chris. I definitely appreciate that brother scrolling down through some of the comments here um here uh, h factor hey man any chance you spending some time on absolute carnage like you did on the x-men great work on the x-men thank you i really i i i really got into the x-men and i'm still into the x-men so there's probably some more content that's coming after i get this next house of x on wednesday um but the absolute carnage i have the number one ordered, but I've never really been a Carnage fan. What I will say is if I read that first issue and my mind explodes, then I'll probably dig into it. I'll probably dig into it. But my love of the X-Men and Spider-Man supersedes my love and like of other things that are out there. So uh, we, we shall see. We shall see. I, as of late, I've actually been digging into the Thor stuff, the uh, unworthy Thor, uh, the she Thor and uh, just a regular old the thou Thor. I've been digging into that and I'm actually really digging the Jason Aaron stuff. I'm a the Malekith stuff, man. I I'm digging it. 
And I have a video coming out for you guys very soon. If I can ever get my software to operate correctly, because I've been having issues with that, I'm going to release a really cool video on that. So definitely stay tuned for that. But we shall see uh, whether I dig into the absolute carnage stuff. I, I will get issue number one. I'll read it. And if my mind explodes, like I said, then we will definitely dig into some of this stuff as well. So scrolling down through uh, some of the comments here. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Uh oh, I'll send you. Okay, please do because I if I I think I know which one you're talking about, and if and if it's that one, I may actually have a copy of that myself here. <laughs> uh, pit bro, pit pit is dope. '90s pit is dope. Joa, welcome, brother. It's good to see you, Gibbon Swolgers. People can't spell Swolgers. That's part of the problem. <laughs> I swear, I've had at least six different spellings of the word swojas. <laughs> Randy's like swole gibbon, swole gibbon. <laughs> yeah, so the issue, man, was uh, we had to actually uh, drill some holes and all this other stuff underneath the house um, to actually get the wire back here because where my internet is in the front room is quite a distance from of the back room with the way that the house is configured. And so we actually decided to go under the house. Um, and so it actually worked out quite nicely at some point, hopefully today I'll be able to test it. I'm actually waiting for the little dongle to come. And when it does, we're going to run some speed tests and hopefully we make some magic with speed. But then, um, my other issue, like I was kind of saying, and, and I don't think it was very clear. So my apologies is that the interface that I'm using is somewhat capped at 720 uh, P. And so even if I'm able to improve the quality and the strength of the signal by going Ethernet, um, we're still going to be hampered a little bit with the limitations of the interface. And so they're promising uh, 1080p at some point. They said it's on the roadmap. Um, and I'm like, cool, can we can we you know speed the car up? Um, can we go into carpool lane to get us there? Um, so that'll be a rate limiting factor, but you know, we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. Scrolling through, scrolling through the comments. Evil Jedi, how you doing, my friend? It's good to see you. I'm actually going to show you guys uh, the books here one more time. I want to just kind of scroll through some of the thing here. Universe Exports is like, yeah, I love the story time with Reg on the new X-Men. <laughs> I, I'm honestly just having fun. I am honestly just having fun with this X-Men stuff. And, and to be honest with you, it's a little nice to talk about something different than Spider-Man. Um, but it's like, I'm actually really, really interested in the X-Men and that's what makes it fun for me. You know, like it's not different. It's not difficult to talk about something new, but it's, it, I want to be passionate about the stuff that I talk about. And, um, I think that that passion, that enthusiasm kind of shines through when I don't have to fake it. And it's just like, look, I'm just having a good time. I think that that helps you guys have a good time as well. So I, I several people have given feedback on the X-Men stuff and I'm glad you guys are digging it because I'm honestly just having fun. And, uh, and again, if there's other things out there that catch my attention that I can get excited about and really just get into, then, then I'll, I'll definitely, um, I'll definitely talk about them. <laughs> Chris, I am not showing that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, try, I'm going to show it. I'm going to try to start a fight in here. <laughs> oh, you are hilarious. All right. So, uh, yes, aggressively relaxing. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, all of those Jason Aaron fans out there, uh, I've got a video coming for you. I've got a video coming for you guys. So stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned for that. Sooner, super honorable nephew. It's good to see you, brother. Uh, no worries on the uh, the delay. We are about to rip through this thing one more time so you guys can kind of see what's up. So, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Chris Barrett is in rare form today. He is really in rare form. <laughs> All right, so I'll show you guys a couple of the books. Uh, this is this is my my mistake. Everyone makes them. This is X Men number two. It actually came back at a nine point six. I believe I actually screened this one for nine point six and above. But the vast majority of books actually came back at a nine eight, and so uh, and so it actually worked out quite nicely. 
first uh, next book is Pit. It actually came back at a 9.8. This was a nostalgic pit. I have a pick. I have no clue how much this book is worth. Doesn't matter because I am I, I am a fan of Pit and Dale Keon. So I'm definitely just pleased to have that one. So we have Amazing Spider-Man 798. Uh, definitely a cool book. We have Amazing Spider-Man 798. This is the regular cover. And I think there's like several of these in here. So we're just going to kind of rip through these. There's another one of those. Here is 799. Really cool red goblin cover. This is when I think they put the um the Mollywop on a lot of the uh spider related heroes. Uh the red goblin put the beat down on these guys and they are all like passed out, beaten to a pulp. Here is uh 799. Awesome red goblin cover right there. Here is a variant 798 variant edition. I absolutely love this one. It's a it's a super creepy kind of uh red goblin there. I'm sorry, green goblin. We have Amazing Spider-Man. This is the uh 798. This is the uh Venom 30th anniversary. Just a cool cover. We have another one of those. We just saw that one. Another one of these. A lot of duplicates here. Another one of these. And then probably my favorite cover of them all is this one right here. This is Amazing Spider-Man 799. This is the Ed McGinnis cover. Definitely a cool cover right there. So also a 9.8. A lot of these came back as 9.8s. And uh, I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see. Let's see what's, what was rejected. Let's see what was rejected here. Scrolling down through. Scrolling through. So let's see. Let's see what they kick back to me. Because I think there's two books in here from the way that this thing looks from the side. These are two books that did not meet the grade of being a 9 point, 9 point 9.6 or greater. So let's see what they kicked back to me here. They actually use packing tape. I'm not a fan of that. Use this uh, gray packing tape to uh, seal the box up. I'm sorry, brown. My apologies. So let's open this thing up and see what we got here. So again, if anyone is interested in some of these books, some of these will actually be available for, uh, for oh, that one hurts me. That one hurts me because I really wanted this one. Man, that doesn't, uh, that really hurts me. Here's one, $7.95. This is a variant. I really like this cover. This is actually the second printing. I really wanted this one. I really wanted that one because I think that's a cool cover. And then the, another one that they rejected. I have to look at this one because I pressed this one. This is a, a Venom cameo. This was a retcon, a Venom cameo. This is X-Force number four. And so I'll probably uh, make mo a lot of these books available up if folks are interested. Hit me up. We can have a conversation. So uh, scrolling down through comments, uh, James Tomlinson, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you uh, scrolling down through the comments. Leonard Ortega, how you doing, my friend? It's good to see you. All right. So I think that's about it. So there you go. That is essentially uh, my second CG haul of the day. Yeah, with all of these books, I did um, press and clean them. I, uh, I mean, honestly, these 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 books here didn't need much of a cleaning. To be honest with you, I was more focused on making sure that there were no fingerprints and things like that on the comics because that would, of course, hurt the grade. Um, but I, I did press each and every one of these books. Um, most of the time, and in most cases, a single press was more than sufficient to actually remove the defects that were on these books. Um, but yeah, clearly I messed up on a couple because one came back at a 9.6 and that one may have been inadvertently slipped in there because I can see two pressable defects right on the cover that I would that I would not have submitted that book that way. So that might have been a mistake again because I had multiple copies of these books. These two I need to look closer at because I thought these two were actually in pretty good shape. Um, there is actually a white speck on this one that I would not have sent that had I seen that. So I'm not sure whether it was something that was in the bag and I just didn't notice it, but, uh, that could have, could have affected things. But again, I, I cleaned and pressed each one of these books myself. So, 
Um, so here's the thing, the way Maddie Joe is asking a really good question here. So what I decided to do for my last couple of orders, um, and it's something that I had never done before. So I wanted to get some experience because people ask me about it and I honestly had no insight. And so CGC offers a pre-screening service where I think it's a 15 book minimum where you basically can say, here's my thresholds for my books. And anything that is above this threshold, I want you to grade. Anything that is below that threshold, I want you to send back to me. And so with this run or this submission, I, I submitted it as a 9.6. So basically there was a 9.6, which they graded. The vast majority of the books were 9.8. So they graded those. And then two of the books fell below the 9.6 threshold. So they actually sent those back to me. They basically rejected them. So out of the last two orders that you guys have seen, which I think was 16 books and 13 books, I had three rejections because they fell below the threshold and only two books that actually came back as 9.6s. Everything else was a 9.8. And I think that's a that's a pretty good batting average, if you will, for you know my, me submitting books and all that good stuff. I, I feel pretty good with that. And the two that came back as 9.6s, I, I, I just clearly messed up on. I just, there's no, no way around it because as soon as you see both of the 9.6s, one yesterday and one today, you can see the defects. So I, I had a brain fart. There's no way around that one. I definitely had a brain fart and actually submitted those. So it uh, looks like that answered Maddie Joe's question. So definitely if you guys have any more questions, let me know. Um, What is this question here? It's the way to go submit to CGC. Um, oh yeah. So you guys are having a conversation. You're following up on that one. Okay. Um, so here's the thing, Leonard Ortega, uh, it's impossible for me to answer that question. And, and I say it's impossible because I don't know what grade that book is. I don't know, um, how the book looks. I don't know whether you're going to get the book cleaned or pressed. I don't know what the value of the book is, you know, based upon the grade that you have. What I would say is that the best thing that you can do is you can look at your comic and you can kind of guesstimate the grade right? Then you look up that grade uh, in a pricing guide. And once you see that price, then you go and you look at how much does it cost to get this book clean, pressed, and graded. And then if you are at a negative, then you probably don't submit it unless there's some sentimental value for the book, or you're just like, I don't care about the value, or you believe that the value of the book is going to increase. So let's just, let's just play this out. You have a book, the book is valued at 40 bucks. Uh, to get the book clean, pressed, and graded, it costs you 32 bucks. The book is worth 40 bucks at a 7.0. Do you submit it? I don't know. I don't know. That that's a question that only you can 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 answer. Um, and then you also kind of have to look at the book and you kind of have to ask yourself, what is the grade right right now? And what could the grade be if the book is cleaned or pressed? And it's really just guessing work. If you don't have a ton of experience grading books, if you don't know how to clean and press your own book, it is true guesswork. But that's, that's the thinking that you kind of have to go through to ensure that you don't submit a book and you pay, I'm making this up, $32 to have that book clean, pressed, and graded. And then you get that book back and that book is a five and you realize that you just spent 32 bucks on a book that is worth $10. That's the kind of stuff you just want to avoid. At least I think, at least I think. So uh, Leonard, if you, I mean, th this is stuff you should, you can think about. If you want to talk more about it, hit me up on Instagram and we can talk through it a little bit more. There's a lot of people that send me these questions and a lot of people that send me videos and photos of their books. And I try to help them as best I can when I have um, the time to be able to do it. Philip, how you doing, my friends? Good to see you. So Leonard, again, if you want to reach out, brother, hit me up. We can have another conversation. I definitely um, am happy to help you. Um, what is the next book you're going after? So uh, it's all about Amazing Spider-Man, my friend. I don't even see my list in here. It's all about ASM right now. So um, there are still, I think, two books that I'm missing between one and 10 right now of ASM. There is, uh, I think, I think there's two books that are missing from one through 10. So I'm definitely on the hunt for those. And then there's a total of, I think, nine books that I'm missing between one and 261. So that's really where my focus is. Um, part of what I'm trying to do is to, you know, find these books a new home. And once I find those books a new home, I'll take that, those funds that come from these books and I'll put them towards uh, Amazing Spider-Man 3 and 9, because those are two books that I'm missing. And then the other books that are missing from uh, the 1 through 261. So um, Leonard, if you've never submitted before, brother, you definitely, you definitely want to check out my various videos on how to submit comics. So between my how to grade, how to grade a comic, how step-by-step, -step, how to uh, submit a comic, 
step-by-step -step how to mail a comic. Um, I have the videos that you need that can actually walk you through the process. And then you can also use the link, the affiliate link in the description of my various videos. If you click that, um, that gives a little bit of money back to the channel, which I appreciate. Um, but that's for CGC. So if you decide to go to CGC, there's an affiliate link, but I have a ton of videos on the channel that will help you through the process step-by-step. -step. And as I've already said, I'm happy to help you behind the scenes as well. Once you look at those videos, I can fill in some of the gaps because there's always these gaps and questions that people have. So, um, Maddie Joe, again, if you're interested in doing it, um, the affiliate link is there for you guys to be able to use. If you decide that you want to go with CGC, if you decide that CBCS or another company is what you want to go with, I don't have experience, so I can't really help you as much there, but I'm happy to help as best I can. So, um, scrolling down, he said he paid almost nothing for it. So there you go. There you go. And again, if, but if it's a 0.5, you pay nothing forward. I don't know if you want to submit it. So, so much of it comes down to what is the grade of that comic? What is the value of that comic? And what does it cost you to actually get that book graded? Um, if you look at the, I think it's the premium package with CGC, it's $149. They give you $150 credit back on grading. So right there, you are able to get three to five books graded for free. Basically, you still have to pay shipping. You still have to pay for pressing. Um, but the grading is basically free if you do the premium, which is typically what I recommend that people do. It's what I do. And I actually dig it. Um, so Todd is asking a question, Hey, Renji, before sending it, do you just look at it with your eyes or a magnifying glass? I just use my eyes. And what I try to do, um, if you go back and you watch my pressing videos, I kind of demonstrate the behavior there. And really what I do is I basically take the comic and I have it at an angle and I basically watch. I watch the light ripple across the comic. I'm watching how the comic affects the light. Distortions draw my attention, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm kind of angling the comic. And this is what I do when I'm buying a comic. And it's also what I do when I'm submitting a comic and grading the comic. The process is still the same. I angle the comic. I try to get some light hitting the surface so that I can see distortions in the light, which signal defects in the comic, which draw my attention and help me to ascertain whether this is a book that should be submitted or whether I need to take some deductions on the grade for that book. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, but I just, I use my eye. And, and, and honestly, if you take a couple of books, let's say that these two books were the same, Part of what I'll do is I'll stack the same books on top of one another and I'll just look back and forth between them and I'll look at the spines. Which one has a better spine? Okay, cool. Let's look over here. Let's look at these corners. Which of them has a better, has better corners, right? And then I'll kind of look at them side by side and I'll do the same thing. I'll flip them over. I'll do the same thing. But I'm basically comparing these two books against one another to determine which is the best book. The best book will get my attention and that book will be pressed. The other book goes back into the bin. So that's kind of very simply how I approach it. And again, if you have multiple copies of a book, it's much, much easier to be able to do the comparison because you just want the better one, right? Not the best. Well, you want the best. Um, more than likely, you're not going to get a perfect one. So it's like, which one is better than the other? That's the one that's probably going to get submitted or cleaned and pressed and then evaluated again. So hopefully that helps. There you go. I decided to send my low grade FF 40, uh, 48, even if it is a 0.5 sells for $500. Exactly. Exactly. I think you, you have to do the math behind it, right? So in this case, let's say that Hydra collectibles was going to spend 32 bucks to get this book clean, pressed and graded and a couple of more bucks to get it shipped, right? Let's just say it's 40 bucks in to do all that stuff, right? Against $500. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer to go ahead and do it. But if you had that same 0.5 and that book was not valued at uh, $500, but 50 cents, <laughs> then you wouldn't spend 40 bucks on a 50 cent book unless there were some other things behind it. You believe that the book was suddenly going to take off in value or there was some sentimental value to it. And that, that's a little bit of a different story. So scrolling through the comments, um, no, I, and yeah, we, I definitely get that. I definitely understand that I've read the book, but again, with, without understanding what this book looks like, what happens if the book has no cover? What happens if the value stamps have been cut out of it? What happens if it's missing a page with the information that was provided? It's impossible for me to tell him what to do with his comic without more input. That's, that was the point that I'm trying to make. So I, yep. Completely get it. Completely get that it's a significant book. But again, 
there's a lot of unanswered questions, right? It's like someone saying, how do I lose weight? Well, the question is, how much do you weigh? And what do you eat? And how much water do you drink? And how much exercise do you get, right? You can't just answer blanket, right? You have to ask some questions and get some more information to actually provide additional information to someone to give them guidance or else you could give them bad advice and then jack that person up. So hopefully you guys appreciate where I'm coming from that, from that. There you go. That's what, <laughs> there you go. That's what I, that's what I try to do. That is the goal. Uh, no, I did not. There's a question here from Chris Baird about whether I uh, finally was able to get one-on-one. No, I have a couple of leads on one-on-one, but have not pulled the trigger on that one. So we shall, uh, we shall see what happens with that. Um, because, um, I need it. <laughs> I need it. Uh, scrolling down through some of the comments here. Uh, yeah. K, uh, K Bruins is basically like he gets agitated or, or she, I'm not sure, uh, gets agitated, uh, when there's only a couple of books to complete in a run. So I definitely get that level of agitation. Trust me, trust me. I get it. Scrolling down, uh, scrolling down. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, U USPS uh, or U UPS, not a fan of either one. But here in California, they actually won't allow us to use FedEx with CGC anymore. I don't know why, but uh, I think it was the end of last year, C uh, FedEx was no longer an option for us to actually be able to receive our books back from CGC through FedEx. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that. And I also... Um, have not never received an answer from them on why they don't allow FedEx. I actually submitted that question about a year ago and never actually got a real answer on that one. What is the oldest book that I've submitted that had a higher than expected grade? I don't even know if I can answer that, to be honest with you. I don't know if I can answer that because I don't know that I've submitted any really old books. Um, there was... Um, that for the silver age appearance of vision, what is that? Avengers 57, that gorgeous red cover. That was one book that I submitted that actually came back. I want to say a seven five. That one maybe surprised me a little bit. Um, I actually did not clean or press that book. I actually submitted this. This was part of my very first submission to CGC a couple of years ago. That was a little surprising. I think the grade of that book is probably higher had I cleaned and pressed it. Um, but I, I can't even remember the year on that one, to be honest with you. But that's probably one that kind of comes to mind as I think about that question. So we have not, we have not done a, a comic cleaning video. Uh, one thing that I will probably say is that oftentimes for me, I'm able to remove fingerprints simply to, by just wiping the comic down. These little wipes are actually um, microfibers that we use with our kids, right? So it's a basically a kid's washcloth, this little thing right here. I use these little things and I have a ton of them where I've cut the, uh, the tags off of them. And I basically use these things when I'm cleaning a comic just to kind of wipe the comic down. When I'm pressing it, I use it. The last thing I do is to kind of wipe the comic down to make sure nothing has fallen on the comic. Um, it's pretty effective at removing fingerprints. You just kind of rub it back and forth. I mean, sometimes with modern comics, that's kind of all you need, to be honest with you. Nothing, there's no magic to it. Um, but a simple clean fiber is, or a cloth is more than, than enough. So <laughs> please have no fear. Come on. By, by the very definition of your name, have no fear have no fear. Misery loves company. We want all the addicts on board submitting all their comics to CGC. <laughs> scrolling down through, uh, scrolling down through the comments here. Uh, Ariel, how you doing? My friend, Chris Barrett, it's good to see you. Uh, take care, but thank you for coming through. Uh, CGC is considered the best. Why would someone use services like CBCS? Um, so I don't, Zach, Zachary, that's actually a really good question. So is Zach, are you the college student? Are you the college student? Um, give me a comment if you are. So I, I, one of the things that I will say is that there are some differences between these various companies that are out there. And, and I don't know if you can say that someone is the best per se. Um, I, my, my, my question would be the best at what, right? Because I think that each of them has some advantages and, and disadvantages to them. And I think if you wrote out a list, you could see that there's some clear differences between the two. Um, and I'm not going to go into all the detail here, but I think one of the advantages to CBCS is that they do signature verification. So if you have a comic that has been signed at some point, right, or you've 
purchased it and it was signed and you wanted to get it graded, you could send it to CBCS and they will verify that signature for you. That is huge. And that is what almost got me to go to CBCS was that feature right there. To be honest with you, that was the feature that almost got me. CGC gives it a green label. That is not the best thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's just one difference between the two, because if someone has um, a lot of signed books, they might want to use CBCS and there's other advantages, but that is in my mind, one of the biggest differences between the two. So, and at the end of the day, I think, um, just like what we read and what we buy, I think it's up to the individual to decide, um, what's most important to them. And, and I, I think that competition is a good thing. And so I love having multiple companies out there, whether you're talking about Halo or EGS or CBCS or CGC or PGX, I think that it's great um, because there are some, there are some real differences between them, price services, turnaround time, customer services. There are differences between the two. So hopefully that helps. Um, thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate that. Scrolling down through some of the comments. Here you go. There you go. Ariel's right on it. Ariel is right on it. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, scrolling down through some of the comments. Yep. 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 There you go. There you go. This right here, this is an excellent point. One of the first mistakes I made when I first started submitting comics, uh, is that I would submit the comic and I actually wouldn't even look through it. <laughs> I would, I would look at, I would look at the cover and be like, yeah, that's a good book. Let me go ahead and send that in. And in one case, I sent a book in and the book had a big fingerprint smudge in the back. Book came back at a 5.5. Five. I thought I killed it at a 9.8. Book came back 5.5. Five. And I read the notes and it was like fingerprint. I'm like, fingerprint? No way. Get the book, look on the back, big old fingerprint right there. And, uh, but that's a point of you need to carefully examine the books. You need to take them out of the plastic, look at them front, look at them back, look through every single page looking for defects because rest assured, if you miss it, they will probably find it. Trust me when I tell you, I saw a guy trying to sell a book the other day at a con at the Stockton con and, um, the guy, um, there was a page missing from the comic and the guy was like, but I bought it from Midtown and they graded it at this. And the guy was like, I don't know what to tell you. The book is missing a page. You know what I'm saying? The guy had never even opened the comic up, had it in his collection, was trying to sell it to pick something else up, never actually looked at the comic. So there you go. Trust me when I tell you, uh, I would definitely open up, um, open up the comic. I would look through it to make sure before you buy it or before you submit it, look through the book. So Scrolling down through uh, the comments here. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you for that. And we're, we're growing. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely we are getting there. Oh, man. Alberto, my friend, we need to get you a slabbed book, my friend. Get something. Get something. Enter the contest that I do every single week. You have a chance of getting a free one. You know, um, that that is one of the easiest ways. <laughs> I'm being able to uh, to get a slab, enter the contest, and maybe you can actually get a free one. Joa, brother, thank you very much. I definitely appreciate you hanging out just a little bit. So scrolling down through some of the comments here. Before I get myself out of here, uh, brother, it was good to have you. Thank you very much. I uh, definitely appreciate that. Ooh, this is a good comment. Where is it? Right here. That's a good comment. Bubs collects. Bub collects. This is a good comment. He says, I found autographs in books that way by opening them up and flipping them through it you can actually find signed books i have never actually found one that way but i do know of people that have actually found sign actually i take that back i found a couple in a collection that i purchased i found a couple uh the guy didn't tell me that they were signed i opened them up sure enough the books were actually signed in the inside splash page because that's actually where a lot of creators used to sign back in the day in the splash page in the cover but again if you don't send them in there you go good quite good comment there all right so there you go um a couple of reminders i'll give you guys i uh, want to give a huge shout out again to the 9.8 cgc submission uh service that i've been working with as of late this is basically a service where you buy some credits once you get like your three credits you basically can buy three comics i think for like a couple of bucks right 39.99 or something like that that will come back as 9.8 so let's say this absolute carnage is about to drop you could get your credits you could reach out to the owner and say hey i want absolute carnage 
one, two, and three at 9.8. And basically those books will come out. He will go get those books. He will submit them to CGC, get a 9.8, and then send those 9.8s back to you. And so again, $39.99 is not a bad price to pay for a book, especially if that book actually goes up in value while it's at CGC, you still only pay $39.99. So it's not a bad way to go. There is a description in the, I'm sorry, there's a, a link in the video here to the website to get more information. There is a code that you use, Reggie Collects, you actually save 25 bucks. So you're almost getting one of your three books for free. Um, so it's a pretty cool service. A couple of people have already signed up for it. So there are people that don't want to do a CGC membership. Um, this is a good option for folks to pursue. So there you go. That is my commercial for today. Um, in parting, what I will say is that if you guys want to talk more about this, because we had a really good conversation here, reach out to me on Instagram. We can continue the dialogue here. And we can, can certainly consider continue the dialogue in the next live stream. But if you don't want to wait that long, definitely just reach out to me over there. And again, we still have a video that will be coming out a little bit later today. So hopefully you guys will check that one out. All right. So thank you very much. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so. Reggie Collects on Instagram and Reggie Collects at gmail.com. Take care.